Today we're gonna learn how to play my song No Shelter, uh, the cartoon of which I will link you to below if you wanna check it out. I think it's like a cool kind of example of how to use maybe alternative chord voicings and how to finger pick them and stuff. But yeah, if you haven't heard it, it sounds like this. <laughs> Then with the vocals, it's like, come back empty handy to the place I landed. Much worse for the wear. So I played it on a nylon string, but I'm using this one kind of so you can see the fret markers and stuff like that. And we're gonna start off with this D minor add nine chord. So if you look, my the A string is the fifth fret, there's the D power chord, so a D, and it's fifth, A. Right there is gonna be the add nine. Now if it was just this, five, seven, nine, A, D, G, you can see that as like a suspended chord, but since we have the minor third in here, which is the sixth fret of the B string, it ends up being a D minor add nine. Really kind of a creepy sounding chord to get things started off with. And I'm really just kind of arpeggiating it up and down, so it's like A, D, G, B, G, D. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right? So it's in six, eight. You can think of it as like a waltz type deal, right? Which most of my songs are in six, eight. And then we're gonna go down to this one right here. C sharp minor six. So the root note now is on the ninth fret of the E string. We're gonna skip the A string. I'm kind of muting it with my middle finger. Picking up that six, that uh, the six interval right here, which is the eighth fret of the D string. And then ninth fret of the G string. And the ninth fret of the B string. And we're gonna do the same thing. Now, if you look, I'm assigning my fingers to the D, G, and B strings right here. So if you look, I'm just going thumb, index, middle, ring, middle, index, thumb, index, middle, ring, index, middle, all right? So we kind of continue that arpeggiated pattern. Now, I'm gonna do kind of a chromatic thing where I'm just hitting the root notes on the way back. So this next one here is gonna be a C major seven chord voicing. So I've got eight E, nine D, 9G and 8B, right? Same thing. Now I'm gonna keep the chromatic thing going, so I need to put a chord on this B note right here. So it's a half diminished a minor seven flat five chord, which we've got my middle finger on 7E. E. Skip the A string as usual. Ring finger 7D, pinky 7G, index finger uh, 6B. And then this next one, we're going back to a major seven chord rooted right here. So now it's like a B flat major seven. Same voicing as on the C, but since we're coming from this half diminished, what I'm doing is my index finger is kind of abandoning its string to grab the root note, and I'm just kind of hot swapping that out right there because you don't want to like put that kind of torque on your hand. So we've got here to here, and then we're gonna finish the chromatic thing with this thing right here, which I'm kind of looking at this as like a F major seven inversion right here. I've got an A in the bass note here, the fifth fret of the E string. Now you could play it open A like that, but I kind of like having my finger there to kind of control that note a little bit better. So I've got five E, three D pointer, five G ring, five B pinky. So that whole chromatic run, and the way I, I kind of wrote this, I was just doing a chromatic down thing and then just adding different chord shapes on top of it till I found something that I thought sounded good. And I'm not really even thinking about what key it is or anything like that. It's just kind of cycling through chord voicing, so that's why it's really important to know a bunch of chord voicing shapes, right? So again, uh, after the, the D minor thing, we've got C sharp minor six to C major seven, to B minor seven flat five, to B flat major seven, to this F major seven with the A in the root. And then from here, I'm gonna slide back into that original shape to kind of connect the dots, right? So since we've got this chord right here, my pinky is on the fifth fret of the B string, and I'm gonna climb up into this right here. So the notes are gonna be E, F, 
G, which kind of leads us back into the original shape. But I'm gonna pick it a little bit differently this time. I'm gonna go A, D, G, B, G, D, A, D, G, E. And then kind of strum it to end it, right? So that's gonna be uh, the verse. And that happens, that repeats until we kind of do this little, like another kind of chromatic thing into the chorus, I guess we call it, right? So uh, the when it changes, it goes like this. Again, we ended up on this D minor, add nine. We're gonna walk this into more of like an open position. So we're gonna do a chromatic thing again. That's a very important part of the song is the chromatic backwards type thing. The same thing we did here. In a, in a very similar way, but we're gonna start on the D minor, add nine, one, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, six count, and then back one. So now we got a C sharp. Major seven, which is four, A, six, D, five, G, six, B. More of a traditional major seven chord voicing, I guess so. Into a C, minor seven, flat five, into a B minor chord with the G string open. So we've got two A, four D, open G, three, so again, this chromatic walk back starts with the D minor add nine to a C sharp major seven to a C minor seven flat five to a B minor. Okay? And that's gonna bridge us into this G, this open G type thing, right? So I'm thinking of a G major chord, but with the aid of the open B and E string, so I'm adding an E to a G chord, but I'm also opening up the D string. So I'm getting a G, a D, that same D, same pitch, then I've got the major third the B right here, another B, and then an E. So if you want to think of it, just adding an E to an open G thing, it's like G, A, B, C, D, E, I think it's like G major six chord, but it's really just a very open sounding G major bar chord that I'm kind of just letting kind of ring out a little bit, right? So uh, the part in the song, uh, this is, is like the, why do you not see me with the clear eyes of you? To draw me in. So a lot of open strings are kind of going on right here, right? So we've got, again, that first one. And this is actually a really easy thing to play because I'm just doing the arpeggio thing. The E, A, D, G, D, A, twice. I'm just moving this shape back one fret, so now I'm rooted on F sharp. So this is like one of the three cold days in Florida, and my head is killing me playing this on a steel string guitar. Usually it's on a nylon. But uh, anyways, yeah, so it's 3 A, 5 A, 3 E, 5 A, open D, and 4 G, right? I'm just kind of arpeggiating that twice, down a semitone. Now we're gonna get like a C power chord, 3A and 5D, but I'm still leaving the G and B string open. Now I'm gonna move this back a semitone. Then to the G again. And then that F sharp. Oh, so much tension. Where is it coming? It's going back to the beginning, right? So I think it's kind of a cool uh, example of how you can incorporate maybe open strings into alternate chord voicings to get kind of like a cool sound, especially, I really like this part. Though. Just adds a lot of tension to kind of come back on that uh, D minor add nine, right? So anyways, uh, that's how you play no shelter. And uh, definitely any questions or comments you have, let me know and I will hit you up soon. Thanks a lot.